This is Dan McTeer. I'm a technology specialist for HashiCorp. I wanted to talk to you today about the concept of replication filtering. Mount filters have been in place in Vault for quite some time, and we're, we're now adding that functionality to namespaces to give you a greater level of, of manageability. So in order to explain the concept of uh, filtering, we need to first understand the concepts of mount and namespaces and replication inside a vault. So a mount is, is the basic structure inside a vault. It's essentially a path where a secret is stored. Later on in, in the vault lifecycle, we came up with the concept of namespaces, which essentially allows you to run a vault within a vault. Uh, but it uses the same sort of pathing structure that we have available in, in simple mounts. Um, and you can actually build mounts inside of namespaces and it gives you the opportunity to isolate those secrets that you're storing uh, apart from other secrets. So when replication comes into play, we're taking what we have here and we're moving it, we're duplicating it into other clusters. And so we may have a cluster over here on the East Coast and we may have a cluster here in Europe. And so with replication, we can essentially take this secret value and we can make a copy of it here and make a copy of it here. Now when filtering comes into play, the really cool part of that is, is we can decide which secrets end up in which places. And so for instance, I can say here at this mount, this secret, can only go to the East Coast and nowhere else. And here in this namespace for this mount, I can say, I want that to go to EMEA and nowhere else. The really cool part of this feature is that for certain situations where you have legal requirements or other sorts of fencing, untrusted areas, you can essentially decide what goes where. And, and the real value here is that for GDPR, for instance, where you have stricter compliance requirements inside of places like Europe, you can decide to isolate secrets just within Europe. Europe, you can isolate specific pieces of data using those secrets inside of Europe. You may even have an untrusted environment. You might be deploying infrastructure in China, for instance, um, where you want secrets to be completely different, uh, managed completely differently in an area like that where you can't trust uh, inherently can't trust that situation. And so replication again and filtering again comes into play where you decide I'm going to keep this set in China and nowhere else. So mount filtering has existed in Vault for, for quite a while now, um, which is great in a general sense when you're, when you're managing a, a general group of secrets. Um, what's coming new in, in an upcoming version of Vault is the ability to apply those mount filters to namespaces. And so again, with the concept of namespaces where you have a Vault inside a Vault, we're giving the control of managing that namespace and its associated mount filters to the owner of that namespace to give you a, a greater level of, of self-service and independence across your user base. To learn more about mount filtering and how to use mount filtering, visit our documentation or go to learn.hashicorp.com.